happy half no, half fortnight, lads. Um, there have been there's been quite a lot of chatter about neural texture compression this week, and it, while it may unfortunately prolong the grief induced by eight gigabyte GPUs, <laughs> it occurred to me that it's a technology that could be much more meaningful on high memory bandwidth cons- uh, constrained on highly memory ban- bandwidth constrained portables. Could AMD's equivalent NTBC run on the next uh, PlayStation portable and play nice mm. with their rumored odd memory configuration? Or could a super light NTC version run on the Switch too, perhaps at the cost of disabling DLSS to free up tensor cores? James Darley asks, uh, hi, digital founders. <laughs> I saw an article today that alluded to neural texture compression and DXR 1.2 cooperative vectors, potentially reducing the amount of VRAM used by textures by up to 90% and granting significant performance boost too. If such technologies become widely adopted, do you think it will grant 8 gigabyte GPUs a stay of execution? Um, I think the bottom line is that um, 8 gigabyte GPUs uh, they they just kind of need to go now um, at 60 yep. plus. I think we talked about this in the past. I don't think you're going to see adoption fast enough to actually um, uh, sort of... Be meaningful. Yeah, yeah. be meaningful. There's just going to be so many games where, for many reasons, it can't be fitted. Anyway, Alex, what do you make about this? Well, yeah, so uh, we talked about this exact same thing just a couple of weeks back, uh, probably as a result of, um, well, the paper coming out about yeah, there was anastropic an AMD filtering. This week and, and the drivers, preview drivers are coming out now with um, okay. a cooperative vector support. Yeah, that's true. The August driver, that's what it was, right? For for AMD to, to finally have coverage of it because before it was Intel and NVIDIA. And yeah, I think this is going to be the future. I said it back in that, where I was like saying, oh, if anastropic filtering is solved, then the main thing that is going to keep this uh, is the upkeep time of like trying to figure out how you ship it. It only covers textures at the moment. It's not covering, you know, general compression beyond block compression on the GPU. You know, the the things that you're going to be compressing, compressing game data for, uh, for example, it, it won't cover things like sound, geometry, etc. So it is only actually one part of the active memory situation, but it is the biggest part probably for recent games. And I think it is a huge deal regarding it running on other devices. So it is low. The inference, uh, like the inference, uh, not on load, but inference, real, runtime inference one, the real time inference one that has the lowest and the greatest amount of memory savings that everyone is talking about, like this 8x, 10x, whatever. Um, that one does have a GPU cost to running it. It is slower than the. Uh, transcoded version of it that is still actually using NTC. And in that case, I think it would limit it to higher powered devices. I don't think mobile is the target here. Rather, I do think uh, desktop, desktop, laptop, uh, console SOC, future console SOCs, for example, are going to be the target here. And I think that is where we're going to see it. I think the next generation of PlayStation, the next generation of Xbox, and the current level of AMD and NVIDIA GPUs, I think our DNA 4, the, the bigger Intel chips, uh, the current uh, NVIDIA ones are going to be the place where you want to do it. Uh, I'm not sure if the trade-off will be there necessarily for like a Turing or Ampere level GPU for all textures in all games, but maybe a subset of them. You don't need to run it for every texture to get the benefit. If you're cutting off 50% of the texture load of the biggest game's textures, right? That's also worth it too. Um, so, uh, but I think there's a lot of stuff that has to be solved in the midterm. Like, okay, well, which textures do we ship? Like some of the textures with the game, all of them, which textures doesn't it work with? Because there's of differences of... Of, yeah, none of them. That's the thing. You're you're shipping a neural representation. You don't actually need a lot of textures at that point. It's cool. Um, <laughs> I think there's just a lot of like groundwork that needs to be solved before we're going to see it. Probably first in an Nvidia sponsored game, and it's going to be probably mind blowing. Uh, I, I imagine in terms of what it's going to do with VRAM. But to get to that point, there's so many things that need to be solved, uh, and I think we're still a good couple of years off. Yeah, I think the other thing is that you know, all the indications are about the upcoming super refresh of um, the Blackwell cards is all about extra memory. Mm-hmm. And we, we kind of don't want to go back. I think it would be extremely <laughs> poor on NVIDIA's front if they produce a super for, uh, lineup, which is using those uh, three gigabyte modules. Right. Um, and uh, and then suddenly, you know, um, 
the the 60 class 60 series gpus follow on and then we're back to you know 12 gigabytes and 8 gigabytes that would be quite poor wouldn't it that so you know you it know. is the case where i think we could finally draw a line under 8 8 gigabits 8, 8 gigabyte gpus and and move on i still think there's a market for them of course and you know i don't really you know a lot of people are very angry about the um rtx uh, what is it the 5050 um but, oh, you know, I think the it's, waste of it's, sand, uh, as they call it. Yeah, you know, I think as long as the pricing is okay, you know, and it's, pricing is quite dynamic in that budget market. I mean, I actually saw the um, fifty sixty available for two hundred and fifty pounds this week. Oh wow! Um, actually, which that's is, not bad. Which is oh, under wow, yeah. under MSRP. It's there. pretty good, actually. So yeah, um, well, it is good until you play Stellar Blade on medium quality <laughs> textures. <laughs> well, if that's your use case for buying a GPU, then. Maybe don't yeah. buy it. <laughs> mm. um, any thoughts on this, John? I mean, it's, it's, it's great to see more machine learning-based technologies come to the fore, which can potentially be game-changing. But I think the bottom line is nothing changes overnight, really. Well, that's the thing. All of these things are cool, but it takes time to implement this. You're not going to see it just, like, widely adopted across that many games, all the games, whatever. It doesn't change the fact that there's already a ton of games right now that are struggling on 8 gigabyte GPUs, and they will continue to be the case going forward. So I feel like the ship has sailed. Uh, and But this, this technology is very interesting on its own, regardless of that, as a separate thing. And yeah. honestly, you know, thinking about this stuff from this perspective, it all it just it also kind of just makes me think of the old demo scene. Really, it's just an alternative method for crunching down data in a way that seems insane, and then producing results that are far beyond what you would expect given the amount of storage or memory required. Right? Like, this is just a different approach to solving that problem, and I love that stuff. So, uh, I'm very curious to see what it looks like when it's actually put into use in a shipping product, like a proper game. Yeah. Uh, but it's, I, you know, it's definitely not going to be like the savior for eight gigabyte GPUs. I think. No, I think the thing that kind of annoys me about the fifty sixty in particular, and it actually applies to the forty sixty and I guess the fifty fifty, is that, um, you know, it's taken a while, but compute performance, you know, GPU power has actually increased now on those parts and. 5060 yeah. is up there with a with a 2080 Ti, but then the 2080 Ti is actually doing a ton of you know things that the um, 5060 can't do because it doesn't have enough memory. And I think yeah. 1440p with DLSS is a perfectly viable target for a 5060, yeah. even a 4060 actually, based on um, Alex's uh, tests. Right. So the the concept that you've got that uh, raw horsepower there, but you can't use it because of uh, problems elsewhere in the design it's it's a lopsided design basically that's that's kind of what kind of annoys me about maybe that. it's time to bring back those old windows 3.1 era like uh expand your memory software <laughs> like the sram oh those things <laughs> i thought you were gonna say like sram on the card you just no no no, no no but i was like no you're software memory <laughs> yeah download extra ram that was download that was extra cool. ram <laughs> so that would be great. <laughs> so, so, I mean, it would be hilarious if there was actually software unlocks to actually access all the memory on a GPU. <laughs> oh my God, do it. 